Hey guys, I'm John P. And I'm Callie Lewis. Today on Geek Beat, we have a very special episode for you. We're going to teach you how to use Sketchbook Pro. Right now. Here we go. Wait, wait, Not the smoothest intro we've ever had in our lives, <laughs> that's but that's right. okay, it doesn't matter. We're just distracted and excited because we actually have a very special guest with us. We've got Renee here. She's from Autodesk, and she is the community manager for Sketchbook Pro. Hey, Renee. Hey, guys. <laughs> So uh, you, you've obviously, you know all about Sketchbook Pro and... Um, and all the variants of Sketchbook. And all the variants. Uh, there are variants. So uh, let's talk about that. What uh, is the difference between... Oh, well, there's a lot of differences. It depends on uh, what hardware you're using Sketchbook on and which version you're using. Um, we've done our best to sort of make the most of what all the architecture, including like <laughs> iPads and phones and, and everything that we can to get everyone able to draw so that you don't need a super fancy tablet. So I've got, I've got literally, I've got it running on my Ooh. Samsung Galaxy Note. I've got it on a tab. We've got it on this uh, uh, eight the, inch the, Android yeah. tablet. Uh, it, it, we've it, we've it got it and then we've everywhere. got it on Windows 8 and yeah. Yeah. Everything. Everywhere. Oh, we our do our Macs. best to make sure that everybody can have access to it. Good. Here's one question I had for you. I don't know if this is, uh, and we should probably talk about what it actually does here in a second, but one question that I had was, is it possible to maybe start drawing something in one place and then continue it in another or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's oh, kind of like a dream that, you know, you've got like somebody sketching on the bus on their way into work and then they take that file and they put it on their desktop version of Sketchbook. There are different workflows for everybody. Maybe you want to use Dropbox, maybe you want to email it to yourself. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The, That's awesome. You can send those files back and forth across the versions. That's awesome. Cool. I want to learn how to do that because seriously, okay. a lot of times I, I'll have an idea while I'm out yeah. and I could sketch that on my little note three or something. But then that thing is way too small to really yeah. mm -hmm. make it good. And now, is that a pro feature? Mm, no, it's just, you know, I mean, the note is so small anyway. Like, you know, it's all, all you've got is that little screen space. Yeah. Um, but it's not a pro feature to be able to transfer them back and forth. Awesome. So even if you're using the, if the free version, Express, you'll be able to transfer that file. Okay, sweet. So uh, before we it? get, hold on, before we Go get ahead. into that, um, as we discuss all of this, uh, we do have, we are live. Yes, so are. if you are in uh, watching, just head on over to the chat room at geekbeat.tv slash live and type your questions, your comments, your thoughts, all of that. And we'll try and bring that into the conversation. Yeah, we are watching. Like right now, Robert said, oh God, another Dave. Dave Peterson <laughs> said, oh Cap. Cap said, hence the nickname. <laughs> We're watching right now live, guys. So uh, just, All right. Yeah. So what is it? What is Sketchbook. What do people typically use Sketchbook for? People use Sketchbook for all sorts of things. We've got, you know, illustrators who like to draw and paint in it. And then we've also got industrial designers that design everything from shoes to lawnmowers to jewelry to everything in Sketchbook. Wow. It's really the painting and drawing program for everyone from professionals to newbies. What about me? I can't draw. My dad was an artist, and I got a good one. none of it. He was a great artist. I got nothing. <laughs> Whatever. Your dad also spent a lifetime practicing. I think anybody can develop some skills if they dedicate a little attention to it. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of that. It's all about practice. Um, you know, if you're going to get better at anything, if you just put that time into it, you can't get worser. So <laughs> although you will need a little bit of skills and a little bit of time, we have a couple of tips and tricks and sketch to get you drawn faster and sort of smarter since it is a digital tool. So awesome. I'm going to show you some of those today. Okay, nice. good. Nice. All right. Uh, so what, what, what's the plan here? Well, like, hang on. Before we actually do this, I want to introduce a, a product, if you will, into the mix. <laughs> I, I've never used this before. It was not sent to us for review. I heard about it. I bought it. It just happened that they arrived today. Okay, yes. We have this little thing. It's called the Smudge Guard. I got you one also. Oh, cool. The Smudge Guard 2. And what it is is basically like a little glove 
but it's missing most of its fingers. This one. Oh, look at that. See that? It's called the Smudge Guard 2 because it has two oh, it fingers. Oh, it They also have the Smudge Guard with only has one. Now, the reason why. It feels I, so weird to put your thumb through there. The reason why I decided to get these is because what's happened in the past when I draw on the screen or when I draw using a little tablet is the your your hand let's say you're a little sweaty or hot or whatever it kind of sticks to a screen and this prevents that so it lets you smoothly move across things and cool. we'll see uh we'll see if that does any good but have you ever seen that before that's pretty cool it's pretty cool i've never seen it i like how it looks super cyberpunk <laughs> yeah. they're cheap they're like 15 or 16 bucks but you have to go to their website i can't even remember what it is it's probably like smudgeguard.com who knows? Oh, yeah, smudgeguard.com. Oh, there you go, smudgeguard.com. The, <laughs> the lady who invented it is an artist. And, uh, you know, might as well get one if you're going to do this a lot. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah, all totally. I had to say. So how, how are we going to learn to draw? Okay, so I'm going to go over a couple of the sort of basic tools in Sketchbook, um, including switching your paintbrush, okay. uh, erasing, using layers to your advantage, and using the symmetry tools. And we're going to draw a character. Uh, like just a cute little character face in Sketchbook. Oh, nice. I thought I was just going to scribble. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Scribble a little bit if okay. you like. There's a little bit of scribble. I'm counting on you to make me a great <laughs> artist. Right. Yes, yes. Actually, Callie, I was thinking we could draw a little caricature of you if that's okay. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. We're going to draw Callie. We're going to all draw Callie today. I nice. thought that would be kind of fun. All right. Well, you guys, uh, if you're joining in and doing this along with us at home uh, or at work, wherever you are, uh, you guys should share these drawings uh, afterwards. That's so right. We'll after open you, it up. After we're all done, everybody like tweet them at us or something like that because we want to see what you're drawing <laughs> yes. and how your Cali drawing comes out. All right. Uh, well, so I guess the first thing, are we going to get acquainted with our little interface here first or what are we going to do? Yeah. Yeah, let's give a, an overview of the interface. So okay. I'm going to switch to my desktop view. And um, if you guys want to share along with me, you see my screen? Yep, okay, yeah. See it. All right, great. So over here on your left hand side, you've got your brush tools. So the brushes should look pretty familiar to you. Um, it's normal brush things, mm -hmm. normal tools that you'd find in a regular art room pencils, pens, erasers, markers. Up at the top, you've got your top toolbar. This is a lot of functional tools in Sketchbook. And it's also where if you need to open or close a layer palette or the brush palette, you're going to find those guys down here at the end. So um, we're definitely going to be using the layer palette. So you want to make sure that's open. You can click this guy to make sure he's open. You can drag him around and put him wherever you want. And then we're also going to be using the Copic Color Library. So Copic markers, they're kind of a standard in the industry. They put in their marker system into Sketchbook. So it's pretty cool to be able to use their colors. And you can literally go buy the marker off the shelf, like at an online store. Now, let so you, let's make sure we both got our layer palette open and our color library. I, I have it. OK, the, the layer palette, is that the one that this, looks like the little, the little three stacked pieces of paper? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And it should, you should have a background layer and a layer one maybe right now. Okay, yeah, I see it now. All right. I've got my well, uh, Copic library and my, my layers open. Hey, my Copic so library I love, has pretty cool looking colors in it already. They're kind of cool, like right? Purple. What I like about it is that if when you look at just this color wheel like this, sometimes I'll pick the same colors because you just naturally gravitate to them. But with the Copic library, I pick stuff that I wouldn't normally like think of, like this brown or something, right? Like maybe I wouldn't normally use that. So it gets you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. I like it. Okay. By the I, way, my, my uh, you have a huge screen there, John. I know it's a gigantic. <laughs> I'm using I'm using <laughs> HP uh, the HP. Uh, Z1 Generation 2. This is a 27-inch <laughs> touch screen. That is awesome. And I love it. <laughs> and I'm using the Acer Aspire R7. Uh, this is a Windows 8 tablet, and it, it is pretty awesome as well. This is a touch screen. This is what, 15? Uh, yeah, I think it's 15.4 or something. And yours, you have the Acer Pen. I do. Which this pen matches that one, and that makes, this whole thing is uh, pressure sensitive. Yes. So, Which is important. Yeah, and I don't have the pressure sensitive thing going on on the, the Z1 screen, so I've got a little Wacom. How do you think that's pronounced? Wacom, I think it's Wacom. 
I think they the corp I think the corporate it's I called corporate one day. I literally did because I was like, well, how do you say this? And, and they, they said, said wake them. Okay, well I got a wake them. I've got a Wacom Intuos. This is the medium Intuos tablet because it will let me do the pressure sensitive stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Renee, what are you using on that end? Uh, so, I'm using the Wacom Cintiq Companion. Uh, so, it's a great little machine. It's like an all in one laptop shoved into a little Cintiq. Um, and it's, it draws like a dream. And you have a pressure sensitive pen as well. Yeah, it comes with its own pen. So, you've got to use the special pen that comes with that. Okay. Pro tip. How important do you think our work is in terms of the pressure sensitive pen? Like if, if people don't have a pressure sensitive pen, maybe they're trying to draw with a mouse or something, and mm -hmm. how big of a difference does it make? It makes a huge difference. And not only for your drawing, but also for your health. Um, you know, drawing with a mouse is just not a great thing to do to your wrist, and oh. you could cause permanent damage. Okay. Um, so be sure to get something that's actually, you know, will keep your, your bones in line. So even nice. if you don't have a, a computer that has a touch screen or a tablet, you can get one of these little Wacom tablets. I mean, they start at like $99 at Best Buy. Yeah, Valley. really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. I thought they were more expensive. Well, this That's is great. the medium one is one, uh, it's 200 on uh, at Best Buy. Okay. But if you take in the Amazon, the Amazon printout, it's 186 on Amazon and okay. they'll match it. Uh, and that's for the medium size one. The small one was 99 bucks. All right. Okay, so now that we've gone over that, let's move on. All right, you guys ready? So the first thing I'd like you to do is to select the pencil tool. He's this topmost guy right here. And let's make sure that you've got a dark color selected, like a black. You can either select your color from the Copic library, or you can use this color puck right here. Click and drag in the color puck to change the color. You can also click in it and you can get this little like regular rainbow um, interface that you might be familiar with. Sweet. Cool. I like how if you I like how if you click in it and you drag up it gets lighter yeah. and if you drag down it gets darker. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty nice, right? It's quick for being able to change your color if you're doing shading. Okay. All right. Ruby question. So we've got the Hold pencil on. tool selected. Mm -hmm. The next thing I'd like you to do is to turn on the mirroring tool. Wait a You'll minute. find that on the top toolbar right here. Callie has a question. Oh, sorry, Kelly. Why? What's the difference between the two colors that I see, the palettes, the white and the black? Oh, this one's not a color palette. This is your brush palette. So if you drag and draw left and right in it, it'll change the brush size. Oh, oh sweetness. Awesome. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. The idea is that you'll never need a keyboard. So for sketchbook, some things you still want a keyboard, but they try to make it very much so that all you need is your pen. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, now moving on. All right, so on the top toolbar, I'd like you to turn on the symmetry tool, which is these two little squiggly lines right there. So once you click on it, you'll see that there'll be a dotted line down the center of your screen. Now, anything you draw on one side appears on the other. Um, are we, we're doing the squiggly lines with the, 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 up the and vertical down one, right? It looks like an hourglass. Yeah, yeah you, got it. So you already I, had yours. I don't have... A click it again to turn do it on again. Sorry, that's because I screwed up your desktop. See, you have a gigantic oh, desktop. Oh, I do. So move this over to the middle. Oh, yeah. Pan out by using the eyeglass tool here. Okay. Ooh, oh, how did you where, do that? Where was the eyeglass tool? Eyeglass tool is on the top toolbar right here. He's this little spyglass. Oh, there. And then, and then go to the middle and drag and draw. Drag down or up? Um, it, any direction will let you go in or out. See so uh, your zoom? There, there you go. Sweetness. Did you get it? Okay, yeah. Got it. And you see your dotted line now? Now I do. Bingo. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to use that symmetry tool to our advantage because that means we only have to draw half the drawing, which is awesome. We can be lazy. Oh, I like that. I like being lazy. <laughs> we all like being lazy in the digital age, right? We want the computer <laughs> to do it for us. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to draw half a circle and you'll see the other side will just draw for you. So we're just going to draw a nice big circle in the middle. Okay, mine looks more like a heart. I'm redoing this. Okay, you can hit this little <laughs> red arrow right here up in the top corner, top toolbar to go back. <laughs> I keep getting like this Do little indention. Do it again. Intention. It's okay. It's not a problem. <laughs> this I is actually... just going to be our outline for the drawing, so it's okay if it's not perfect. 
<laughs> That's as go. perfect as I can make it. <laughs> it's like fine, it's fine. Once you've got that done, what I'd like you to do is draw a line that cuts the circle in half, kind of like this. So I'm gonna make my line a little bit curved, like that, almost like you can imagine like the um, equator on a globe. I got the curve down. Mm, nice, nice. The next step I'd like you to do is I'm going to draw a circle along that line. So what this line is, is where we're going to place our eyes. So I'm going to pick somewhere right around there, and I'm going to make this circle sort of be cut in half by that line. Nice. You got it? Yes. Awesome. It's starting to look like a Teenage so now, Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> From the island to the bottom of the chin, let's make a mark that sort of um, defines that center of, of this area right here. So the center of this area. So I'm gonna draw it right here along the symmetry line like that. Just like a little mouth? Yeah, it's gonna be the where the mouth is gonna be. That's right. I'm telling you that's a Teenage Mutant Ninja <laughs> Turtle right now. I, it kinda wait, does, huh? It looks like Wait, it. didn't she say we were drawing me? Yeah, don't worry, we're getting there. Uh, <laughs> I swear it's gonna look like you, Kelly, I swear. <laughs> All right, the next thing I'd probably do is um, do an outline of where the hair is going to be. So if we imagine this big circle is where the face is, the hair is probably going to be just a little bit off to the side of that. So I'm going to sort of just follow my circle, and then I'm going to go down a little bit and kind of like make a little outline of where I think Callie's hair is going to be. Okay. All right. Oopsie. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of stutter on mine. Yours is uh, <laughs> hey, wait, I'm redoing mine. Hold on. <laughs> wait, first of all, can switch to mine. <laughs> Just let's show them what I did first. That's a, that's a messed up looking hair. Okay. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, so the next step, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use what we've drawn as an outline for our actual drawing. So um, we're going to create a new layer on top of this. And then we're going to pull the opacity of this layer down, and we're going to actually draw our cute little character on that layer. Okay. So let's let's go to the layers palette, and you can see on layer one we've got the little outline that we did. Let's hit the plus button to create a new layer. Okay. Everybody got that? Got yep. it. All right. Let's go back to layer one and let's turn the opacity down by using this slider right here. I'm going to make it pretty faint. You want to be able to see it, but you don't want it to be distracting. So what percentage opacity do you have? You know, it doesn't have like a percentage. Oh, it does. It's down at the bottom. Um, I have 19 is probably where I like it. Okay. But it's really a personal preference. Mine's at 22. Mine's at 19 right. because I follow the expert. Right. I'm a rebel. <laughs> All right. Now let's go back to uh, layer two, and we're going to actually start drawing Callie's face. So we click on layer two, and that selects that one, so we go back to it. Oh, wait. I that's have right. Background in layer one. Well, that's okay. You, it's Is layer that what one. we mean? Okay. Yeah. You'd be on layer uh, yeah, one. Yeah, as long as you've got the background on a separate layer than the one that we're drawing. Okay. On, that's fine. All right. So the next step is I am going to draw sort of a C shape around the circle that we made for her eyeballs. So if you watch, I'm going to draw it right about here, just kind of like a little C shape. And that's going to be Callie's upper and lower lid. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm, the next step is I'm going to draw a U shape hanging down from the top of her lid. And those are going to be Callie's eyes, just like that. Okay. Th now, is that U shape? I'm having a hard time seeing from here. Is it just like the bottom half of that line that, di that intersects the eyes, or is it the whole thing? I'm sorry. I'm not sure that I know what you mean. Oh, okay. Where you drew the little U? Oh, there, yeah. I can see better. Now I can see better. Okay, sweet. So I guess... That yeah, that helped. Because I have my pen on a fairly thin... Uh, in order to do that, the eye, the C-shape, I guess mm -hmm. I need to go thicker? Yeah, and you can do that by using this puck right here and just drag and Wait. draw to the left or the right. It's usually to the right to make it thicker. John, look at this. Okay. I don't think I'm using a separate layer. I think that's uh, my problem. No, you're on... that. Uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> hang on, hang on just a second. You see, now here's another little trick, and I know we didn't get to this yet, but on the layers of the little eyeball, and if you yeah. click that, it'll hide it. So, so I was. You okay. were drawing, it was just lighter. Um, 
So now click layer one. Okay. Oops, and unhide there. So then I just want to make my pen size. A you need to take. You need to make the opacity. You see, you did. You took the opacity down on your top layer. Oh. Not, not your bottom layer. Okay, got it. That's cool. That's how we learn things, though, is by messing up. I accidentally locked it. I think. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. All right. So bring that back all the way up. Yeah. And then background needs to come down. There you go. Okay. Yay. Now you got it. Now I see it. Cool. All right. Okay, so I got the C, and then I'm catching up now. And okay, a little, little U. Like that kind of thing. Yep. I made a U shape coming down from the top of your eyelid, and that's going to be your eye. Her eyes look better than mine. Maya. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. The next step is I'm going to give Callie a pupil. So I'm kind of going to echo the same U shape that I just made. Um, and I'm going to fill it in. So I'm going to fill it in just like that, right inside of her eye. Nice. And I'm then sorry, I might so select I an eraser like a... at this point, which we can go over to the brush palette over here. And then I'm going to select this eraser. And I'm going to give her a little bit of a sparkle in her eye. Just erase just a little bit like that. I'm on a pretty thin pencil. I have to yeah. I, make I, it bigger. Yeah. I'm coloring in your eye, <laughs> which is better than spitting in your eye. <laughs> oh, it's much more preferred that you just hey, color. Why right. is mine so thin? Um, now, do we have, if we have a keyboard available, can mm -hmm. we do the thing where we, where we hit, or since we're using the pencil, I don't know, can we change it using like the little brackets, you know, to make it bigger and smaller? Yep, you can use the brackets or you can hold down the B key the B? and then anywhere on your screen, yes, the B key, you can drag and draw and it'll act just like this puck. Oh, nice. There you go. Now you got a much No, bigger. it's it's at 14. It's at the okay, max look, that I can you go. You can do this. Oh, yeah, that's as big as it'll go, probably because it's a pen. That's okay. Oh, okay. So each each uh, hard, piece of hardware that we use, like the pens, they have yeah. different settings themselves? They do, but you can break all the settings and make your own custom brushes on oh. anything you like. Oh, okay. But the default tools are locked down. So. It sounds like Kelly, Kelly's probably got a small, or you've probably got a large canvas, so your pencil seems small. Oh. Yeah, that's why, because I made her canvas really huge. <laughs> we probably did. should have. We probably should have done some kind of. Thank uh, you, John, because that. you're making my Kelly look fairly evil. Nice. <laughs> you guys caught up? You ready to move on? Yes. Wait, no, Wait. she doesn't have her little Oh, my eraser. Yet. I forgot so, the eraser because it took me yeah. forever. <laughs> Get your eraser. Is this the eraser? That's one of them. No. Get the other one. There. There Just you go. Just a little sparkle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. The next step is probably to give you uh, some eyebrows. So the way that I draw eyebrows is I just follow the curve of the eye. I go a little bit higher than the eye, right about here, and I just follow that natural curve. Oh, nice. Oh, we go back to the pencil, right? Yeah, back to the pencil. I'm okay. sorry, I didn't specify. Oh, no, that's oh, right. Oh, yeah, I better do that, too. Oops. <laughs> okay. Or you'll just be erasing nothing. Right. Okay. And this Once is you've got your eyebrows, I'd probably give Callie a big smile because she's got a really nice smile. <laughs> so how I would do that is I'd look at where my little mouth line is that we made earlier, um, and I would draw like a D that's facing downwards. So like a big D. So let's start out with a line like this, and then I'll connect it down at the bottom, just like that. Okay. So I messed nice up. Line. I, I accidentally hit the little button on my pen, and it started mm -hmm. drawing a a permanent line everywhere. I had to figure out how to stop that. Nice. Uh oh. Yeah. So the button on the pen opens up a uh, like a quick menu like this. So um, yeah, that's that gives you access to all your other tools. So it's good to try and avoid that while you're just trying to draw. All right. I got my mouth. Hang on. I'm way Yay. behind. I, I've got a. <laughs> I screwed up the eyebrows so bad. I had what to, did you do to the eyebrows? <gasps> I gave you a very surprised expression. <laughs> like I plugged my... <laughs> okay, I'm happy with my oh, no, eyebrows now. See. 
Oh, it looks cute. You guys are doing so good. Sorry, I wasn't watching the Skype window, but you guys are doing awesome. <laughs> okay, what were we supposed to We need a mouth. Okay, so. Yeah, yes. so you draw a line. The mouth is and like then an upside down like D, a D to give her a big smile. Okay, nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> I've got. <laughs> See, something's wrong with my pen. It's like whenever I get it nearby, it's just drawing the lines. I've got crazy mustache. I don't know weird what thing going what on. What did I do? That I don't know. Give me. <laughs> let me see your screen, and maybe I can try and help. Oh, Ken, can you show? Yeah, he's so got it. I, when I get the pen here, see, it's just like wherever I put my pen. Oh uh, yeah, it looks like what you're doing is you're in like the the line drawing mode. So you can check on your top toolbar if you want to look at my screen. Uh -huh. You've got this option, which is free draw. It looked like you were doing that drawing, which is just like draw lines like this, right? Yeah, I don't want to do that. So if you make sure that you've got this squiggly line selected, then you can do free drawing like we were doing earlier. Oh. Did that work? No. I, oh. Well, uh, well, just go touch it. Can you just touch it up there without a pen? Does that make any difference? That is selected. I don't know what's going on. No, I'm here. not sure then. Hang on. Maybe I've done something. <laughs> I've, I've screwed it up. I'll just do it with my finger here. Okay. I'm Does it? Selected my pen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that. as Ben said in the chat room, I got whiskers. <laughs> Yay, it looks good. Aww. Okay, there we go. She's kind of Yeah, cute. you did really nice. <sighs> okay, my, I caught up. <laughs> mine's a little fat and scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now let's give Kelly a cute little nose. So between her eyes and between her mouth, Let's find that halfway point, and I'm just gonna draw a cute little nose like that. Yeehaw. Aww. It's pretty easy, so nice and simple. Ugh, mine looks like a mustache. <laughs> Maybe turn it up just a little bit more. <laughs> I'm gonna try my pen again. Let's see if this okay. goes insane with me. Oh, here we go. All right, here we go. <laughs> is it working? <laughs> yeah, it is working again. Yeah, but I Yay. gotta. I keep missing my kind of little center point there. Mm. Once you've got the nose, then we'll start to draw the outline of Callie's face. How do I, I, t I, when I did my settings, I created mine for a transparent background. So it's all like pixel. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. So um, do you have an extra layer for the background? Uh, an extra layer? No, I need to add another layer. Okay, add another layer, and we can flood fill that background with white, and then you won't see the transparent little boxes. Okay, I hit plus. Now I've got another layer at the top, but I'm going to drag it down to the bottom by using the little... The arrows, up, yeah. down arrow. That's it's, right. Okay. And then if we go to um, your toolbar, or I'm sorry, the paint over here on the brush side, there's a little bucket tool. And you can flood fill that with white, and you won't see that background. Okay, I got a bucket. All um, right, make sure it's got white. Okay, I got to click in my little color thing here and, mm -hmm. like, drag it all the way up. Ooh, yay. You could do that. Sweet. Oh, awesome. That was awesome. Yay. Okay, now, now I go let's back. go back to drawing, but make sure you select the pencil tool and black and go back to the right layer, too. Okay, I'm back on the right layer. I got Actually, that. Blue. And... Yeah. <laughs> Although you were blue, so... I was blue. Uh, there you go. I don't know, something like that. Let me see. <laughs> well, you, you've there gotten go. a compliment, Yay. Renee. Um, uh, Harumph says you're pretty good at teaching seniors. Oh, <laughs> John P. <laughs> that was brutal. <sighs> oh. Thanks. Okay, boy, her All face right. is already looking way better than mine. Yes, but go ahead, does. let's keep going. <laughs> All right, so um, now I'm going to use that circle that we drew as a guideline for Callie's face, and I'm going to draw along it to give her the outside of her shaped face. So I'm just going to go down kind of like this, okay. and then Callie's got an outside to her face. You're following the exact line? I wouldn't say I'm following the exact. I'm kind of, you know, I'm going a little bit Oops. different. What am I doing? Okay. It's whatever looks right. You know, you've got to sort of judge it as an artist as you're drawing. It's really <laughs> meant just as a template for us. She called me an artist. Yep. <laughs> okay, I got one. Oh, Yay. I used the wrong pen. I've got some wedge chisely marker looking thing going on here. Mm. You can also just grab
grab the pencil tool again from your toolbar over there. Or you can throw something else if you'd like. Here we go. I, um, this is fascinating, actually, to me, to see this process. Because I, I'll be honest with you guys, I, I don't have any, uh, uh, well, you know, any kind of training or anything. But these, like, the layers and everything, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are all tools that uh, professionals use. So this is really the, the way it's done. All right. I got an outline for my face now. Yay. All right. So the next thing I might do is Callie's hair. But, you know, Callie, you've got an asymmetrical part. So what we're going to do is turn off the symmetry tool for this ah, bit. Uh -oh. So go ahead and click that same symmetry squiggle okay. and make the line disappear. Gone. Gone. But now I have... And then the... I might start from this side of your head over here. Renee, real quick, and my lines don't... Like, you, okay, you have a little bit of a gape, a, a hole in where the line was. Is that the way I'm supposed to? Mm, a gape. I'm sorry. I'm not like sure what where, you mean. Where the oh, down here at the bottom, but with the chin, I just, yeah, I'm just being messy, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I have an actual line, like where the, the symmetry line was. Yeah, I think it's because my, my pen is so... Yeah, it's the pen's fault. No, I mean, oh. it's because the the canvas, not the pen. The canvas... <laughs> Because it's I wasn't because going all the way through. you didn't connect all the way to the end edge of it. I must not. And you left I a thought I gap. did. Okay. But you can fill that in later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. More you important can fill that in hair. anytime you want. I need hair. Over here on mine, I've actually <laughs> given you horns. <laughs> nice. Um, it was kind of accidental. I don't know what happened. Let's see. The camera's the camera got Oops. out of focus here. <laughs> all right. So so what are we? There we go. There, it was accidental, so... It's how I, see, I see how you really feel about me. <laughs> I'm just going to erase the... Oh, that didn't work. Erase. <laughs> you can just do the undo. That's true. Undo would work great. Oh. And somehow I even switched back to the wrong layer. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, oh. layers can get tricky. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm painting, I really only paint on one layer because I don't want to worry about what's on what. Yeah. I'm just going to keep undoing until those things go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me talk you through how I draw Callie's hair. Okay. So um, I would probably start over and above this, um, the left hand eye, and I would sort of draw little like lines like that to sort of suggest your bangs. Again, make sure that symmetry is turned off. And then don't forget to connect the bangs to the other side. So I'd probably um, draw like this to connect your hair to the other side of your face. And then once you've got Callie's bangs kind of figured out, then I'd probably start to draw her actual hair. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines along the side of her face to suggest the rest of her hair. I don't mind keeping the hair feathery like this because um, it really shows the texture of hair. Yeah sort of helps get your point across. Once I'm kind of done doing Callie's hair, I'm going to hide layer one because I don't need to see my guidelines anymore. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of digital art, though, is that you can always erase. You can yes. always go back, and the paper never gets worn. You know, you never run out of materials. So it's okay. It's all a process. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. How do I fix what I just did? <laughs> Except for well, I'm doing. Well, let's see. You can hit the undo button. You want to do that? Well, I know I could do that, but, like, what am I doing wrong? Because it looks like crap. You're not doing anything wrong, but I started along the outside of your head instead of going along the inside. So I, I've noticed you've drawn oh, like, your hair coming okay. down like that. Yeah. So maybe I erase that you and I draw I on said. the outside of your head. Like, don't connect it to your face. Like, draw I see. A little I bit see. Further okay. <laughs> By the way, one thing that I've noticed, if you look at mine, um, you see that I have really heavy kind of blue lines here. Yeah. When I draw on this screen um, with the with my finger, since there's no touch sensitivity, I only have the thickest line possible. Mm, yeah. And yeah. so what I've noticed is if I do the same thing with the tablet, mm -hmm. um, 
then, well, sometimes. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's I can either do a really fine line, or if I hold down, it gets thick. So I can. That's that's where that tablet sensitivity actually makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference for artists, I think, to have that sensitivity. That looks really good, Callie. I like what you've done there. <laughs> I like what you've done with your hair. <laughs> right. I was trying to do these little uh, wisps that you got going on, but they're not working. Yeah. Um, draw really light and just kind of like, I, I'm not sure how to describe it other than follow the curve, but draw very lightly and sort of feathery. It, I liked it before I drew the outside, but then yeah. like once it became a whole picture. Well, this is your mm -hmm. first time. You're practicing. Oops. Yes, that's right. So don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect this Oops. first time. But um, if you want, we can move on to yes. uh, using how to color with layers. Good idea. Yeah, let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a brand new layer just to put our color on. So in your layers palette, go ahead and hit that plus button again. Oops, I hit it twice. And once you've got a new layer, you'll notice that's on top of our lines. We want the color to go underneath our lines. So let's grab the little arrows right here on the side, and then we'll drag it underneath our line drawing. Oh, OK. Wait, what? The little up down arrows, oh. grab that and drag that layer Behind. beneath the other beneath. layer. Okay. This allows us to color underneath our line art, so we don't have to go like right to the edge when we're coloring. We nice. can just sort of be more free with it. Are we going to give her rosy little cheeks? Yeah, let's do it. <sighs> um, so I'm probably going to use the Copic Color Library. And I would suggest you guys use a paintbrush, the default paintbrush. Oops, I've got black selected, um, which is this guy right here, this paintbrush over here on your toolbar. Um, I've also got a custom brush that I might use. So I've got symmetry on, which makes my coloring happen twice as fast. So are so you I'm, talking about... I'm going to color in her face. Well, on the paintbrush, are you talking about the one on the bottom left or the bottom right? Um, it would be... It, I'd like to use this guy right here. He's actually at the top on the on the right hand side. There's oh, also the oh. synthetic paint tools, which are down here at the bottom. Okay, I got they're it. a little they're a little unpredictable. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so and now we choose our color. Yeah, go ahead and go to the Copic library and choose a nice rosy pink or peachy. Ooh, and now I'm going to turn on my symmetry so I can speed yeah. paint. Oh yeah, we're going speed uh, symmetry. Okay. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Did you paint inside her eyeballs? I did, but I was going to erase it back out. Oh, okay, cool. Good idea. So I wasn't going to be too worried about that. I was just going to erase it back out once I got my color down. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're you're really light. I, do I need to just turn? You look like an <laughs> Indian. I, you, that is an inhuman color. Here, saying, why I'm, don't you I'm drawing. Like, pick a lighter one here. There, try that one. Okay, I'm just drawing draw a right new monster. It. Okay. <laughs> You're drawing in your hair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not drawing inside the lines. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's one of the beautiful things about using layers. You can go back and you can erase it and it won't even touch your lines at all. All right. I'll continue filling in the lines. You guys. Okay. Wait, but mine right. is, way, is mine too dark? I look like... No, you got a good tan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it looks good. See, I've got a darker color too. Yeah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of shading on top um, with a lighter color. So, so I might use like hmm, maybe this color and give you just a little bit more of a, of a bit of a hint of shading around the edges of your nose and stuff. And I'm using the airbrush tool right now, so it's super light and it's super feathered. Ah. So it just kind of fades it out. Airbrush. Yeah, you'll find him at the top right. Okay. Kelly, what color are your eyes? I can't tell from the tiny little TV screen. They're black. Black. Okay, so let's her eyes are hazel. <laughs> oh, I thought she meant the ones on the, that I drew. <laughs> I thought maybe you meant like dark brown, black. I wasn't going to question it. Right. Yeah, her, real, her real life <laughs> eyes. Okay. They're kind of hazily or whatever. Okay. So when I go to color her eyes, maybe I'll pick a couple different colors, like a green and a brown. 
I'm gonna switch from the airbrush tool and go back to one of my paintbrush tools. And I'm gonna fill in her eyes with sort of a brown and maybe use like, I'm sorry, green. And then I'll use like a brown around the edges. We didn't create a new layer, right? We're still in the same layer. Yeah, yeah, I'm still coloring on the same layer. And if you wanted to, you could color your eyes on a separate layer. And that's definitely a method that you can use. Um, I just thought I'd keep it simple and keep the color on one layer for now. Hey, is it possible if I want to zoom in on my eyes, can I yeah. like pinch to zoom or anything crazy like that? Um, you can if it's a touch screen. You should be able to use two fingers yeah. and zoom in. Nah. Oh, no, if it I didn't use, work. Uh, I had to use like there three. You go. When I use like three fingers, it yeah, worked. yeah. All right, sweet. So, how are you doing, Hazel? You do like a little a blue and a little green. Yeah, I did a little bit of blue, green, and brown, actually, to kind of give you a hazily look. Because it's kind of like a marble look, right? Mine are hazel, yeah. too. Yeah. Oopsie. I had the wrong color selected. Oops. Enzo said you could easily turn that into a great owl painting. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're done with the eyes, I think let's make a new layer for the hair because that'll probably be much easier because that way we don't have to worry about where we're coloring on our skin. And we can kind of hide all this messy bits that I've just sort of put out there. We'll use the color for the hair to hide that. Good idea. So I'm actually going to click the plus button. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Did you guys, you, you did the outside what you hadn't filled in the black before. Okay. I right, got yeah, that Yeah, yeah, yeah. This part. Is that right? Uh, That's right. And then I, I left out the little white bit, so you still have your sparkle in your eye. Oh, wait. Uh, no. That's no, not right. No, kind of. You were missing a line, basically, around. You, you need a... a you see the oh. black part? The black part's a little big and you needed one. Oh, more. yeah, you filled it all in. It's yeah. okay. I mean, you can kind of erase it a little bit if you'd like. I thought so just something. Draw around okay. the, just draw around the on the black, right on the black. Kind of, mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Like Good that? enough. Okay. Now your eyes are blue. <laughs> By the way, I am totally digging how with the touch screen and three fingers, I totally love yeah, how you can that manipulate. That is really nice. That is really awesome to be able to just resize and move that around like this. I don't know. It's super natural. You know, it's it's very much like just having a piece of paper. All right, guys, are you right. ready for hair? Ready. All right, let's do it. So what I did is I made a brand new layer, and this layer is on top of the skin color that I created. And then I'm going to pick a nice warm brown for your hair. And then I'm going to use this brush, um, and I'm actually going to draw it out like you might expect. Just like I drew the lines for the hair, I'm going to make this kind of feathery and let the edges sort of feel like they're little pieces of hair. It's nice to have the symmetry on while I'm doing these side bits, but don't forget that your hair is asymmetrical, so we're going to have to turn that off eventually. Okay. Um, so, okay, let's see. So the layer, it, it goes layer one, layer four, then layer two? Um, yeah, that's what I've got right okay. now, too. So the, I've got my lines on top, and then underneath that I'm coloring my hair on one layer, and your skin tone on another layer. And you did it, um, I do it in, in I'm here, using the right? Yeah. Okay. That's right. You're doing it just fine. So I'm, I've laid down a whole base layer of brown. And then on top of that brown, I'm going to do a little bit of shading to give your hair some shine. So go ahead and get your base layer down, and then we'll move on. <laughs> You're doing great. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, we got to do the bangs, don't we? Yeah, so you're going to have to turn off symmetry and then color right. in the bangs. Nice job. You guys are naturals, I told you. Whatever. <laughs> but thank you. She knows she's on camera. Yeah. Ah, 
I got yeah. symmetry again. Oh, no. <laughs> the folks at Whoops. Autodesk are going to be like, as soon as we get off this thing, they're going to sit around and have a good laugh about it. <laughs> never, 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 never. <laughs> I'm having to erase. I colored outside of my line, so mm -hmm. I have to erase mm -hmm. that. That's totally fine. That's normal. The nice thing is that you can erase over her skin because we use a different layer. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about being super careful. <laughs> yeah, I would have to say the number one thing, if like, if you take nothing else away from this, the number one thing to keep in mind is that, that layers make your life better because we were able to start out with that first oh, yeah. layer where we had mm -hmm. the little guidelines, sure. you know? You should use your layers as strategically as possible. Um, you can get kind of confused if you have too many of them, but definitely use them to your advantage. All right. <laughs> Yours looks so much better, John. No, oh, mine it's sucks cute. Too. No, it's cute. It is cute. You guys are doing really good. <laughs> so now that I've got a base layer for my hair, I'm going to pick a lighter color brown. And I can do that just by drawing up in the, the color puck. Because um, as you recall, you can draw up and down to change the color. Um, and now I'm going to sort of use the same feathery, brushy brush strokes to give Callie a little bit of shine to her hair. And I'm just going to go across her bangs like that, because I think bangs usually have some shine. And then maybe I'll go down here to the bottom. Ooh, I don't have symmetry on it, so I'm going to turn that on really quick and then go back down here to the bottom and give a little bit of shine to the edges of your hair down at the bottom. Which tool was that? I'm sorry. You uh, were using well, the brush stroke she's still again. Using the br she's still using the paintbrush, I think, right? Yeah, I'm still using a paintbrush. I'm using a tapered paintbrush that I created, though, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Oh, okay. um, so, <laughs> so your paintbrush, you might want to make sure that you've got a small paintbrush oh. like this. And then maybe I'll make sure that the opacity is sort of a little bit higher. Okay, I have a, I have a question. I screwed something up on mine. Okay, let's see. All right, so I got my, my hair is this certain color of brown here. And mm -hmm. did that, did that oh. go out of focus again? Sorry. Uh, so my hair is this color of brown and I lost the color in my little puck. Yep. Can yep. I get an that eye? Happens. How do I go get that exact color? So you're going to use the eyedropper tool and there's a couple different ways to access the eyedropper tool. You can either use the alt or option key on your keyboard. Or if you have the color window open, there's another little color guy right here, this little eyedropper. You hover over whatever color you want to pick up and click, and it'll reselect it again for you. Okay. Oops. The quickest oh, way to use this is to use your, your keyboard with either Alt yep. or Option. Oh, okay. And so, okay, so now that the John's fixed, we have, we're using the, the paintbrush, but how did you create the uh, shine? To create the shine, I made sure that my color was a little bit lighter. So oh, make sure okay. you've got a lighter color. So Callie, it looks like you've, you're drawing with the same color on that color. So in your like in your color oh, puck, okay. in here, make sure to pull up to make it lighter. Okay, got it, I think. And yeah. then you can use your paintbrush to actually draw a little bit of shine. Let's and see, I've got my mirroring turned on again. Did you make the tip kind of tiny to do that a little like yeah yeah so you'll, you'll want to draw and drag inside of this to make it a smaller brush and then you can draw a little bit of a shine i might do the same thing with low lights because our hair is you know it not only has the dark it also has the shadows in it so i might pick a dark color and do the exact same thing around the edges of her hair Make sure that she's got a little bit of shadows in her hair. Just like that. How's that? Oh, it looks great. You're doing awesome. <laughs> How's she's, your job? She's a good Yours, teacher. She is a very good teacher. Oops. Actually, um, while we're talking about teaching, Mike G in the chat room just asked if you guys have online classes. There's a couple different ways you can get classes from Autodesk. Uh, we have a conference called Autodesk University, and it's every year in November, December. You can go to the AU website, and there's classes not only on Sketchbook, but on every other tool that Autodesk offers. Okay. 
On Sketchbook specifically, we run a blog at sketchbook.com and we feature tutorials from people in the industry and inside of Autodesk. So those are both two good places to check out Sketchbook stuff. Fantastic. All right, I'm done with my hair. <laughs> my hair. <laughs> it looks good. It's horrible. You're doing a really nice job. It's horrible. That's okay. <laughs> looks good. Mine does not. All right, so what's next? I guess we're, are we pretty much done? We're pretty much done. The last thing you might want to, I might want to show you because it's a really cool trick is that you can color the line art without messing up the rest of the picture. So if we go back to our layer with the line art, for me it's layer one or layer two, for you it might be layer one, whatever, the, the one that's got your outline on it. If we click this little lock right here, that's the transparency lock. What that does is it locks all of the pixels on your screen that are transparent and it only lets you draw on what you've already drawn. Holy mother. <laughs> so what that's gonna let us do is take like a nice rouge color and turn the lines for her lips into red. Does oh. that make sense? Like once you start drawing, you'll kind of see what I mean. If you lock the transparency, it'll only draw what's already there. Oops. I'm gonna give you some pink lipstick. Oh my Pretty God, cool, that was right? so awesome. Wait, That's okay, I, I don't have it, I guess. Okay, <laughs> okay, you see? I locked. Yeah, there, now it's locked. Okay. Now just the lines you've already drawn get affected by your color. That is oh, so awesome. that is really cool. I had originally, I, I So you drew, can scribble and it doesn't matter. I That's drew, right. My, all my outlines are blue and then I was like, well, I kind of screwed myself with the blue. Nope, not at all. You can go back and change it to anything you'd like. All right. Cool. That's really it. You guys did it. You drew Callie in Sketchbook Pro. Nice. That? That awesome job. Awesome. Well. Wow. Hold oops, on. We're, we're, now we're perfecting. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's part of the process. So you go in, you perfect anything you like. That's right. <laughs> All right. Now I got it down. So I'm loving this. That was awesome. This so we, was really cool. So let's see. We learned how to how to control the thickness of our lines using the pressure sensitive pins. Yes. How to use layers. How to use symmetrical drawing for faster and easier drawing. How to change our colors and our transparency. Yep. Um, how to how to actually draw, yeah. for goodness sakes. You taught me how to draw. <laughs> okay, one last little question is, yep. now that I've drawn my picture of Callie, I want to share it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. What, so um, there's two you? main file formats I would suggest. I always keep one for archives that you, if you want to go back and edit it, you can. And then one for the internet so you can share it with everybody. So if we go to file and save, if we save it as a TIFF file, that's going to save it as something that you can go back and edit all your layers later. So super important for your archives. But if we save it as a PNG, then that's going to give you really nice quality and you're able to share it anywhere on the web. Nice. So I'm going to save two files. All right, so everybody can take their picture of Callie, save it as a PNG, and then tweet it <laughs> at Autodesk yes. and at GeekBeat TV. Yes. And we can see, <laughs> we can we all look see for what that you did. and see what you did. <laughs> and do like a hashtag, like do hashtag. Sketchbook Pro? <laughs> yeah, hashtag, yeah, Sketchbook Pro. Or... Yeah, should we just do sketchbook so that they don't so have, have to... Le less letters. Oh, wait, uh, wait, don't we have a Twitter at Sketchbook Pro? Yeah, you can oh. tweet at that too, and I'm oh, behind okay. that handle most of the time, so I'll see it. Okay, so do like at GeekBeat TV and at Sketchbook Pro, mm -hmm. and we'll see it. Yeah. So that'll be awesome. We'll... <laughs> Thank you so yes, much. Yes, thank you. You guys, um, I, you're, you're uh, on Twitter and you're paying attention. So you guys go follow her and um, make sure you ask any questions because obviously he and I, uh, well, we've learned a lot. There's Renee's she's the actual Twitter right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Renee to Cherry. All right. Thank you so much, Renee. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you for you, having me. And thanks to you guys for watching as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching over there. So if you got them. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.